Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel show out. The tension in Genoa City is reaching a boiling point. Diane and Phyllis are at each other's throats, leading to an explosive showdown that forces Summer to seek help from the one man who can tip the scales, Victor Newman. But the drama doesn't stop there. Phyllis has a stern warning for Lily as Nikki makes a shocking decision that could change everything. Meanwhile, Billy's latest move pushes Jack to his limits, and Victor once again sends Adam on a mission to take down Billy. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Summer throws a stunning adoption curveball that could rewrite Harrison's entire custody story. Don't miss out on this week's must-see drama. When Diane and Phyllis go to war, Summer goes to Victor for support. On this episode of The Young and the Restless, Devin and Abby decide on a date, Harrison shares his emotions, and Victor chastises Kyle. A delivery man leaves a note for Abby at Society. She reads the note inside the envelope, smiles, and opens it. Harrison tells Kyle and Claire at the Abbott Mansion that he got sick from shrimp. He consumed a lot. Kyle jokes that his mother never told him to slow down and expresses his gratitude for his improved health. Harrison says he called off his vacation. Kyle assures the child that he is his top priority. Now that he is feeling better, Harrison considers taking the group to Paris. Yes, Claire. They'll go someday, but not just now, Kyle assures him. Harrison claims that his mother informed him that it was fortunate that he did not travel to Paris because she would not have been able to care for him if he had become ill there. He tells how Summer assisted him by giving him crackers and ginger ale. He declares that they are a family, saying, maybe she's right, maybe it's good I stayed here so she could make me feel better. Claire extends her hand for an embrace. Harrison begs for ice cream and has an empty stomach. Summer pays Victor a visit at Newman, where they talk about her Marchetti triumph. He loves to see her and is overjoyed that she stopped by. His legend status is hinted to by Summer. He queries the purpose of the flattery. Summer acknowledges she came to seek his assistance. She is certain that he is aware of the conflict between her and Kyle. Victor always assumed their relationship was friendly. That was prior to Kyle betraying his family and being sacked from Jabot, according to Summer. After that, he co-owned Glissade with Audra Charles. She is evidence that Kyle is self-centered. She didn't agree to split custody with this man. The news that Victor is evicting Harrison from the only Genoa city house he has ever known pains him. Summer gripes that he intends to defeat Jabot using Glissade. Audra is a serpent. She told Kyle, I don't want her near my son, but he wouldn't listen, so she ended up filing a lawsuit to get full custody of her son. The boy can only be shielded from Kyle's toxicity in this way. She bemoans the fact that Audra and Kyle were planning to take Harrison to Paris. Then her attorney intervened, saying that he might have remained there indefinitely. Victor understands her perspective, but he also observes a guy attempting to escape his father's control. Summer is aware of his dislike for Jack, but he is unable to support Kyle's relationship with Audra Charles. Victor is unsure of precisely what she wants from him. Diane thanks Jack at the club for the celebration last night. When the conversation shifts to Harrison, Diane promises to text Kyle to check on the boy. He thanking her for phoning him will be seen as a victory by her. Her eyes dart to Phyllis, and she tells Jack to brace himself. Phyllis walks over and says, Good morning. Incoming. Diane gushes to Phyllis about her beautiful anniversary night with Jack and replies, It was. Phyllis is very pleased for both of them. She is accused by Diane of expecting something from them. Phyllis claims she arrives peacefully. We are currently facing a problem. She believes Summer and Kyle may benefit from their experience. Wisdom? Scoffs Diane. From you, 
Phyllis claims that because they have already experienced custody disputes, they don't want their kids to go through it. Diane scoffs, saying, you can't be recommending that the three of us get together and collaborate. Phyllis believes that everyone wants Harrison to lead a happy, well-adjusted life, and that is what they all want for him. Diane claims Kyle is attempting to provide him with that. Phyllis contends that he is currently acting irrationally. He's treating Summer horribly and making poor choices for Harrison. Kyle is making it difficult for her to be the kind of mother she wants to be to her baby. Jack tells Phyllis, that's enough, as Diane starts to lose it. You have to see that he's off the rails. Summer is not in danger from Kyle. When Abby gets to Chancellor Park, a romantic picnic is waiting for her. Devin walks over and greets her, saying, Hello, pretty lady. He gives her a pink rose and remarks that he felt like indulging her a little. She is concerned that he might miss work. He claims that she is the only thing that matters at this moment. Devin tells her he had to make up for accidentally revealing his proposal during a chance conversation as they sit on the picnic blanket. He is reassured by Abby. When it happened, they were gushing over one another's affection. They concur they don't regret anything. Devin, nevertheless, asserts that the proposal must treat her and their relationship fairly if they are to live out the rest of their days together. He makes fun of the fact that Dom gave him some really good recipe suggestions. He presents cheese and PB&J sandwiches. Dessert, Abby surmises, is sugar cookies. As Devin opens the lid, the words, Will you marry me? are spelled out in cookies. Devin approaches the cookie tray, selects a ring, and kneels down. His best buddy is someone he wants to be with for the rest of his life. She always pushes him to grow as a man and demonstrates to him what true acceptance and trust feel like. He intended to assist her in realizing her dream of having a child, saying, I'm in total awe of you, Abby. There isn't a better mother than Dom. He says, you're perfect, and he has no regrets about how things turned out. It was destined to happen. He is incredibly devoted to her. Will you be my wife, Abby Newman, and make me the luckiest and happiest man alive? Yes, Abby responds, and she will continue to respond in the affirmative every day of their lives. They share a kiss as Devin places the gem on her finger. Summer tells her grandfather at Victor's office that she wants her son to grow up with her and that she needs his guidance on how to successfully defend him. Is that how far it's gone? asks Victor. Is there no way to come to an agreement? Summer replies, none. She's being pursued by Kyle. She is concerned that she is not Harrison's biological mother. Harrison may be fully taken from her by Kyle. Although she adopted the boy, she worries that it is insufficient. How can I play this game? Victor intends to talk to Kyle in order to prevent a conflict between them. Harrison is not benefiting from it, and neither is anyone else. Let's do this. Kyle says to Harrison at the Abbott residence, Victor texts him right then, asking him to come to the athletic club lounge as soon as possible. Change of plans, he adds, and Claire offers to take him out for ice cream. Claire observes that Kyle appears agitated when Harrison is sent to the kitchen. He urges her to maintain his son's smile, explaining that it's a work-related issue. Diane and Jack are seated at Phyllis's table in the club dining room. Up until recently, she claims, Kyle and Summer were co-parenting rather successfully. All of a sudden, Kyle began acting badly and was angry with her daughter. Diane counters, that's not true, but Phyllis proves beyond a doubt. Diane, your son is headed down a bad path, she says that by terminating him, she forced him to go there. A parent firing their own son? That's a personal family matter, according to Jack. As Kyle has chosen to take the boy from the only house he has known and seek sole custody, Phyllis is upset about how the private family issue is impacting Harrison and her daughter. 
Diane charges Phyllis with falsifying the information. Everything was good up until Summer hired an attorney and filed a lawsuit. Jack concurs that Summer initiated contact. What more could her daughter have done, Phyllis wonders. Kyle is forcing her to make horrible choices. She is upset that he is attempting to bring Harrison to Paris with Audra, the woman he had an affair with while Summer was still her wife. Diane believes Phyllis is the reason Summer now views Audra as a threat, saying, you can't tell me you're okay, with Kyle ending up with her. Before Red's assistance turns this into something Kyle and Summer can never get out of, Jack advises Red to back off now. Pouring champagne and raising a glass in the park, Devin toasts to his child's mother and the lady he wants to live a lifetime with. Abby tells him he's truly excelled himself, admiring the ring. According to Devin, blue sapphire is a symbol of faith, trust, and commitment. He believed it would be ideal given his feelings for her. Both Abby and him are adored by her. They share a kiss. Abby is eager to present the ring to her mother. Devina inquires about her well-being. The doctors believe Abby will be able to return home in the fall, according to her. Devin speculates that they should be married in the fall. His suggestion to have it on her birthday is one that Abby adores. Being his wife would be the ideal way for her to begin the upcoming year. Diane recommends at the club that Phyllis assist Summer in viewing Claire as a beneficial influence rather than a danger in Harrison's life. Phyllis is watching that one closely. Diane orders her to cease mentioning Audra in Summer's ear. It is impossible for Phyllis to like that woman, she says. Diane claims that's irrelevant. This has to do with Phyllis's explosive approach to handling confrontation. Phyllis believes that Kyle's behavior is a result of being shunned and ignored by his family. In order to maintain your pitiful position at Jabot, you sacked your son. I take it that you disregarded your son in order to regain your royal appearance. Diane, how many times are you going to turn your son down? Diane becomes enraged with Phyllis portraying her as the issue. Oh, Diane, you are always the problem, Phyllis sneers. Claire apologizes to Harrison for turning down more sprinkles at the park, but she knows that everyone is genuinely concerned about her. Harrison remembers that when he was sick the last time, both of his parents read to him. Due to the divorce, they no longer do it. He is depressed by this. He enjoyed their joint activities a lot. Claire reassures her that they will always love him. Harrison bemoans the fact that they don't even like each other, adding that they are not in love. When Kyle meets Victor in the jazz lounge, he discovers that the meeting is not about business but rather about Harrison's impending custody dispute. Summer came to you, Kyle adds. Victor responds. Yeah, he'd like to know the whole story of the custody battle and he doesn't like what he's hearing. Kyle claims that Summer disapproves of Audra being his business partner and Claire being the boy's nanny. She is being overly suspicious and criticizing every decision he makes. It's absurd. Victor hopes he's not thinking about removing Summer from Harrison's life since she's turned into a very insecure person who makes allegations and perceives threats where none exist. According to Kyle, he would never do it. He is told by Victor, then fix it. Speak with Summer. Harrison's happiness is more essential than making Glissade a formidable force. So you sit down and work this out with Summer. Diane tells Phyllis in the club dining room that the more adamantly she pursues her, the more apparent it will be that she is the cause of Summer and Kyle's problems. They broke up in the first place because of her. Diane becomes enraged, saying, you forced her to lie to everyone, including her own husband. She claims that Diane is self-centered. Seeing her kids in grief, she did nothing. Who does that kind of thing? What sort of mother is she? Diane persists despite Jack's attempts to stop her. 
she tells Phyllis that after everything she did for her family, she has been incredibly kind to her, so why is she acting worried about Harrison, the grandchild she was willing to abandon and send to live with his other grandmother in prison? She is the absolute worst type of dupe. Phyllis queries whether she is genuinely speaking at this moment. Diane, you spent years pretending to be dead. Both Jack and I were under suspicion for your purported murder. But you don't seem to care about it, do you? They're snuggled up here, I'm the evil guy. Diane asks, how is that possible, and claims that they share Danny and Christine's kind of love. She doesn't really love, she just utilizes it to obtain what she wants. She ought to leave their children alone if she truly wants to assist them. When Phyllis hollers back, Summer shows up and breaks things off. This is about Kyle, not Diane and Jack, she informs her mother. After apologizing, she dragged her mother out. Diane warns Jack that things will only become worse now that she's involved. Summer scolds her mother for hitting on Diane in the jazz lounge. Says Phyllis, she was standing up for her. Summer contends that everything is meaningless and that she was only standing up for Kyle. Diane doesn't seem to be aware of her part in this, according to Phyllis. When Victor shows up, he assures Summer that he handled everything. It will work out. He leaves. Summer, says Phyllis. Tell me, please, that you did not ask Victor to assist you. Devin wonders if they can pull off a wedding in three months when they are still having their picnic. Abby exudes confidence. They joke around about possible ceremony themes. Abby exclaims that their ring bearer will be the cutest person in Dominic ever. Devin suggests he may be his best friend. Given that they are a family, Abby is aware that he will participate. They share a kiss. In the park, Kyle spots Claire and Harrison examining cloud animals. Did everything turn out like you hoped? Claire asks Kyle a Kyle says everything is well. Diane shouts at Jack in the dining room that everything looks to Phyllis like a cage fight. Phyllis ignited the fuse, and Summer started it, but she won't let her and Summer put the blame on Kyle. It's time for them all to back off and give Summer and Kyle space to figure things out. Jack admires her fervor and want to protect their son. Diane needs Kyle to know that she is supporting him. They are related as a family. She's willing to face Phyllis if that's what it takes to get Kyle back. Summer informs Phyllis that she didn't have many options in the jazz lounge. She is appreciative of her grandfather's willingness to speak with Kyle on her behalf. Phyllis cautions her that being indebted will last a lifetime and that's not where she wants to be. As his granddaughter, Summer believes that this is different for her. She is told she is naive by Phyllis. Victor has no problem utilizing anybody or anything to achieve his goals. Kyle texts Summer to ask to get together. Phyllis cautions her to be cautious going forward. The next update for today. Phyllis alerts Lily, Nikki makes an amazing decision, Billy's action hurts Jack. Spoilers for Tuesday, August 13th's episode of The Young and the Restless indicate that Jack Abbott won't be pleased when the Abbott Chancellor name change becomes known. Jack will oppose to Billy Abbott tying their family name to Chancellor and linking it with something else because Abbott is essentially identical with Jabo. Billy, however, will contend that he and Jack have equal rights to use the family name. Furthermore, Billy argues that this is truly about respecting Jill Abbott's legacy, thus he will pressure Jack to concede this. In Tuesday's YNR episode, Phyllis Summers will approach Lily Winters and provide some advice that Lily didn't request. Since Phyllis always has an agenda, Lily would assume that she has one too, since she will feel that they should speak with other women. Phyllis will nevertheless give what she believes to be insightful counsel, even though it might actually be more of a warning regarding wildcard Billy and the drama that is building with Victor Newman. Of course, if Billy follows through on backing down and included it in the statement as scheduled, 
he could give Victor a surprise. Victor anticipated that news to be about Billy's increased responsibilities, and he also anticipated Abbott Chancellor's demise. Victor might be taken aback by Billy's choice to operate behind the scenes, but he might also recognize the ploy and decide not to abandon his takeover ambitions. But as it happens, Melody Thomas Scott's character Nikki Newman is going to make a big decision that could ruin Victor's plan and have an impact on her own destiny. With Billy taking a back seat, Nikki might feel that the strategy needs to be adjusted. Victor won't be thrilled if this results in Nikki withdrawing from the takeover completely or in some way making a pitch to Lily. Stay tuned for more predictions on Nikki's actions and updates on Victor's reaction to the news. According to spoilers for upcoming episodes of The Young and the Restless, Victor will doubt her judgment. The next update for today. Billy Six Adam in Victory Will Adam still run errands for his father? The Young and the Restless spoilers for Monday, August 12 show that Victor is still pursuing his grudge against Billy and insisting that Adam take action to help bring the guy to his knees. Minion Man Victor frequently discusses how important his family is to him. He makes no mention of the fact that it's so he may utilize them to carry out his dirty business. Victor has decided it's time for his younger son to show his appreciation for what a fantastic father Victor is by following his directions now that Nikki is at Newman Media per his orders and Adam. This will entail pursuing Abbott Chancellor and Billy once more. Adam is also somewhat enraged with Billy right now. It appears that Adam and Victor will be perfectly matched in this marriage. What would happen, though, if one of them dared to reconsider? Boys, one more round. Summer believes that Kyle, Redding Munsell, who carried out this behind the scenes, is purposefully preventing her from seeing Harrison. She filed a custody lawsuit in retaliation. Still, Summer resembles her mother. When she wants to be sensible, she can be so. Summer is making her ex-husband an offer. If he leaves Audra, she will calm down. But Summer is unaware that Kyle has already attempted it. Victor responded negatively. So, in an attempt to hide his true lack of power, Kyle had another tantrum. It appears that we will be returning to court. An entire novel universe. Chelsea used to be among Genoa City's worst liars. Where that skill set disappeared is unknown to us. No matter how much she seems to want to, she can hardly keep her night with Adam a secret anymore. Should someone even inquire, how are you doing, Chelsea experiences a total breakdown. Really, she ought to move past that. The next update for today. The story of Harrison's custody is completely altered by Y and R's rewrite of Summer's adoption curveball. Let's speak about some unexpected new dialogue since spoilers for The Young and The Restless indicate that Summer Newman did something important that might have an impact on Harrison Abbott's destiny. It's important addressing because YNR completely rewrote the Harrison custody tale, and they just dropped that revelation. Summer resorted to Victor Newman for assistance in the August 9th episode since she was feeling so helpless due to all of the custody problems. Summer caught viewers off guard when she revealed that she wasn't Harrison's real mother. When Victor mentioned that he believed Summer had adopted Harrison, Summer responded that she had in fact done so during their time in Italy. This is obviously a rewriting because, if adoption had played a role, Summer would have brought it up much earlier. Summer has the same rights as Kyle Abbott and is Harrison's legal mother, so there's no reason she had to be quiet about adopting their son. Summer's lack of biological ties is something Kyle regularly brings out, making her appear even more of a jerk. In all material respects, Summer was previously Harrison's mother, but it has now been shown that she is his adoptive mother. This is significant since it raises the possibility of a legal custody dispute. Before, YNR seemed to be portraying Summer as merely a petulant stepmother who had no real claim to Harrison, hence, it appears that they felt the need to raise the stakes and provide Summer with more evidence. 
Of course, if Victor has his way, Summer and Kyle's custody battle might not end up in court. Now that Victor is attempting to coerce these co-parents into coming to an agreement, we'll see if Kyle and Summer can figure out a way to prioritize Harrison. The path to peace won't be simple, as our forecasts suggest that Summer and Kyle still have a lot of arguments ahead of them. If Victor learns that Kyle and Summer are still at odds, he might need to adjust his plan of attack. According to teasers for The Young and the Restless, Victor will continue to be embroiled in the animosity, particularly because Summer's primary grievance is Kyle's relationship with Audra Charles. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.